okay? Okay, I can do my reporting. So let me quickly create a very tiny report and let's see how powerful this is. I'm going to go to control. For my report, I need a start date and an end date. So start date and an end date. So let me just put a start date and an end date. I'm going to put a custom code. That's just a quick format for how to put a custom code. Let's say I want my report from 23rd of uh, maybe July 2011 to 31 December 2011. All right. Oops, sorry. So this is the report I want to create. I want to report from 23rd of July 2011 to 31 December 2011. Just to make it nice, I'm going to name this as my start. I'm going to name that cell as start and I'm going to name this cell as end. So guess what? This is my control sheet. So this is the two things that are going to control my report. So I can now go to my report sheet and just design a report. Let's say we do a regional report. Region and then I want to know what my sales are. And just for argument's sake, let's see start and end so the user knows what report he is, what report he is making. Is start and end. Okay. So start and end, let me create a custom code for that. D D D D M M M Y Y Y. All this is formatting, really. It's just formatting. I'm just linking so the user knows what what start date and end date he is creating a report for. So that's what I need. I need my region and my sales. So I need to get all the regions that I have here. I'm going to pull out all the regions. So I can quickly do that by doing a trick in Excel where you highlight all the items you want and you go to um, so you go to report. And then I'm going to paste special values and I'm going to go to data and remove duplicates. So once I remove duplicates, you will see the unique list of regions for this report. So these are my unique list of regions. So now I need to get sales. So the sales I need is this. I need sales for North Central that is between 23rd of July 2011 and 31 July uh, 31 December 2011. That's what I need in here automatically, right? To do that, I need to use a function called sum ifs. So once I type sum ifs, the best practice is you tab, then you do control A. So this is sum ifs. Now sum ifs is a very powerful tool. It just says I want to sum something if some a condition or a criteria is met. For us, we have three criteria. Look at the three criteria we have. We have that thing where something must be north central, that thing where something must be after 23rd of July 2011, and it must be before 31st of December 2011. Three conditions. So I go to some range and I go to data and I highlight revenue here. So I go to data and then I click on, you remember data is our automated data table. I click revenue, this top here, revenue. You see it shows all actual data revenue. That's what it's called. Then my criteria range. What criteria am I using? Technically, this is my first criteria. This is my first criteria, North Central. The criteria is North Central. Where should I pick North Central from? I go to criteria range and I go back to data and I select the column that will contain all those north central things, which is all actual data region. The next criteria I want is all, all the dates that are greater than or equal to start date. So how you write that in Excel is this. Greater than, equal to, you put them in double quotes. Greater than or equal to is a text. It kind of you can qualify as text. But dates in Excel are actually numbers. So you say greater than or equal to in double quotes and put your and sign and then you pull the name of the start date. I think we called it start. 
I can press F3 to bring out all the names I've defined. Select Start and say OK. So this is the syntax. Greater than or equal to and start. This means greater than or equal to start. This is the number that represents that date in Excel. So where should I get this greater than or equal to start date? You go to criteria range, then you go to data, you highlight date. So you can see a figure already here. These are all the north central revenue greater than or equal to start date. But we also need to restrict the ending. Our criteria for ending should be less than or equal to end date. End date. End date, we press F3, we called it end. So where are we getting this lesson equal to end date? The criteria range is in data, this column. So guess what? We have basically created, we're summing all of this where the region is north central, where the date is greater than or equal to start date, and the date is also less than or equal to end date. We click OK, and you have your figure in here. I can make the figure look all nice by going to custom and making it a million format. These are all simple advanced formatting in Excel. So this is a million format, making it two commas. And then I double click this, I come here to total, and I do an alt equals to, which is a shortcut for summation. And guess what, I have a beautiful report. And this beautiful report is dynamic. How is it dynamic? It's dynamic in the sense that I can come here to control I as the administrator and change this to 1 Jan 2011. By changing this first day to 1 Jan 2011, if I go to my report, it has updated. Can you see that? It's updated. Right? And the nice beauty of this is also that your data is live. This data is live. So since it's live, it means that if I go to my data source, remember that data source I had? Let me open it. Let me open that data source. So where, where I had my data, where Power Query was querying, you know, Power Query was querying a data, a data source, a, a, a folder with data. So that folder with data, you can decide that, do you know what, I've just finished November. I need to include November in this report. And look at how easy it's going to be to do that. So look at our data source, all actual data. Let me pretend, let me pretend that, can you see November 2011 here? Okay, I'm opening this live data. I can see November and uh, where is December? I'm going to delete this November. I'm deleting November. Uh, I can delete this November. I'll delete. Yes. Uh, let me see. Where's December? December, December. Okay, look at December 2011. So I've deleted November and December. I'm pretending I didn't have them. Let's come back to our report. I'm going to change this report to 1st of November 2011 to 31st November. Remember, we haven't refreshed. This data was there before. So if I come here, you will see your report is 1st November 2011 to 31st December 2011. Look at it here. But you remember I deleted it in the original folder. Now I'm going to tell Power Query, hey, Power Query, I want you to refresh. So I right-click, I refresh. Look up here to the right. You can see Power Query has pulled 41,000 rows. When I refresh, Power Query is pulling, is pulling and pulling. Now it has pulled what? It has only pulled 37,712. This is just refresh. All I did was refresh. Okay? And all you will need to do is download your data from IT, dump it into that folder, and refresh. So if you look, if I go back to report, guess what? Nothing is showing. <laughs> Nothing is showing because there is no data. So let's Let's pretend. I go to IT. I say, hey, IT, please give me data for November and December. So IT gives me November and December. I copy it, which I have saved as a text file. I go to Power Query Demo. I go to all actual data where I'm dumping my data, and I paste it. 
guess what? I've now pasted November and December into this folder, right? Now I go back to my Excel. I open it where I had my query. I refresh my query. Query is gone into that folder and it's pulling data and pulling data. And now if I go to my report, automatically it's updated. This is the power of Power Query. This is the power of autom automating your reports. And there is so much more you can do with this tool. It's just that we don't have enough time. So I'm just going to close this tool. Um, but this is the power of Power Query. Thanks for watching another training video from Deep Brown Consulting. See you in the next video.